a beaut. I'm blind mechanic and <laughs> trying to see if I can feel if it's the same size. It's custom. <laughs> So I have been working on some like bowl selection AI stuff today. And I just kind of want to show you the method of the madness. This is our first year going to AI. I always thought buying bowls was hard, but then you go and you're picking out AI sires and you can get so much more specific versus like choosing a bowl for your herd. I now am choosing bulls that I'm gonna put on 20 females in this group and then 20 in this group or whatever I end up deciding to do. But if you remember, last year we talked about um, Inherit Select. It is genomic testing through Zoetis for commercial animals. So they don't have to be purebreds. Um, so I have EPDs on all of our OG cows, replacement prospects that are coming in. Um, you know, all the cows that we've raised that we like. This is my list of females and their sire, their dam, if we know, any of the replacements, obviously. And then these are just breed composition and our EPD data. I've gone through, kind of figured out, um, this is all of it. And the cool part is, is you can go into search point and it gives you an average of what your herd is. And then it actually like highlights things for you. And I might show you this in another video uh, when we go more in depth in this. Traits that should be fixed, right? So we have really high birth weight EPDs in our females. So even if we breed them right now to calving ease, low birth weight bulls, they're still having big calves because of this. So I know I've highlighted some stuff that I want to work on fixing. Um, I want to improve our marbling in the herd. We have some pretty high dry matter intake cows, some big cows, mature weight wise, um, which I can fix a little bit. I don't mind big cows, but I don't want to get them bigger than they are. I'd rather be more in that like 1300 range. Um, so I have all of my EPDs. This is my breed composition. Also has the sires in it, so I make sure I'm not like inbreeding anything. It's line breeding if it works, it's inbreeding if it doesn't. <laughs> but I don't want to cross clean up bulls to daughters, um, that type of thing. So I've been going through that and I have my list of bulls I've kind of looked at. I don't have anything locked in yet here, but for example, jurisdiction, cash flow, essential, schooly standout, high mark, TJ, gold strike. But I'll probably end up picking like four different bulls, five different bulls to AI to. I can go more into detail at some point in a video about choosing sires. I just wanted to give you kind of a little bit of the nutshell as I've been doing that. I'll probably make another vlog really showcasing the process and we will start the AI process in early May. So you will see that coming pretty soon, which is kind of terrifying already because we still have 61 cows to go. Okay, we're gonna go to the farm, see what's going on over there. I know dad was gonna haul manure. We'll see if he got that far. I was gonna say, um, these Farm Pro shirts, or like the performance shirts from Ag Gear are my all time favorite and I will be living in them year round. I have a code if you wanna use it. I love them. The company is great. Um, small business supporting rural. Rural folks, farmers and ranchers with clothing that actually works for us. Dad is hauling manure, so we got everybody bedded before. We want to lounge in, sun's out today, so all the chubbies are like, this is great. Dad's on load number eight. This pile is gone. He's working on those. And then we're going to clean the barn now, probably when I'm gone this weekend. Would you guys like to go to your new home or go into the barn? Come on. Oh, where's the other one? Oh, hey. I'm trying to eat my rest of my protein bar. Too distracted. Come on. Come on. Hey. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, so we got a twin from earlier. Twins from the down cow. One and two. We got two goats here that are sold leaving soon. That's the first uh, twin. The other one's on a mom that got grafted. This is the calf that mom didn't want the other morning and then this is from the last set of twins so there's six yep six bottle calves in here nice hi that's a good nappy oh we're awake not dead all right one day 
baby this afternoon. So now we're down to 60. New baby is right there. She likes to run circles around you, so it's good because now she can't. Bad news. We have a hydraulic leak on the 250. <sighs> and it's like way inside. And I think the mirror's better. We're gonna try to take a dual off and see if we can cut a wrench and access and tighten the nut. <sighs> so we'll see what happens there. I had to go retrieve the jack. His dad left it over here because we're gonna hook the mirror spread over here. We're gonna hook it over there for now. <sighs> Get my steps in. He's trying to, I get, so you can use a skid loader to put the thing back on. <laughs> I have my bald head out, don't you dare. I can't see it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I literally can only see your nose and down. Well, if I'm gonna stick my arm up here, can you see it? Fairly? I mean, no, I'll stick it in. You got your f finger right on it. That's the other one. Yeah, I'm just trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blind mechanic and <laughs> trying to see if I can feel if it's the same size. Well, we got a tire off. Mm -hmm. These are too long to fit in to tighten one of the thingers. So now we're gonna hack it off and see what happens. Having fun? Yeah. <laughs> I missed it! <laughs> you wanna loosen it up and start over again? <laughs> Not really. I turned that a quarter turn. That's what six after. Did you show her what you did to the wrench? <laughs> it's custom. <laughs> Started first. Yes, I, know, but I suppose we could have done that without taking the tire off or not. I don't know. I was out of arm length before. I missed that. I really missed. I thought you were joking. I thought it was sarcasm. It turned a lot. Good work. And I got the first wrench on the first. Yeah, we were trying to figure out the right size without it going on all the way. We thought we got it. We didn't. So it must be the thing or an O-ring or something. So now we're gonna call the dealer. Well, uh, I was hoping that was gonna be a happy answer because we cut the wrench, got the uh, nut tightened down. Nathan turned it like a quarter turn really easy and then he turned it some more and we thought we were smooth sailing, got all excited and then it started leaking out the bottom instead of the top of it. So we're gonna call a dealer in the morning. Oh, I have to get a mechanic in less than ideal because I don't want to take that other tire off and stuff sucks. But anyways, less than ideal, but lots of things going on. If you didn't know, like this is my brain does all the time. There's just like 85 million things going on and it's just busy season year round to be honest. But if you have any questions, let me know. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.